Roll call. Joni is absent. Attest to publication. Lori saw it on the website. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. Motion made by Shelley, seconded by Tina. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. Brian Brewer from Beard Company. Will we be able to see him, Dave, or what's his connect? Uh, because we're showing these um, handouts that Brian wanted. Okay. It'll be just voice. All right. There. Okay. Great. Thank you. So the documents that Brian will be talking to are on pages six, seven, eight, and nine.
All right, can you hear me now? Dave, can you hear me? Can you hear me now via the phone or via Zoom? I can hear you, Brian. Yeah, because I, I can't hear you via the phone at this point. So, I'm all the way up. Testing. Brian, can you hear me? This is Julie Myers. Dave, I see you walking. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I'm up as I'm up as far as I can go. All right. So, is John hearing me via the speakers, or we can hear you? But it, it's not loud enough. So let me try and get rid of my Bluetooth. The volume is good, Brian. We can hear you well, if you can hear us. We don't think you can hear us unless you have a mic. Um, can you turn your speaker down now a little bit? John, are you hearing me? Can you hear us at all, Brian? John, are you hearing me via the Zoom? Yes, we're hearing you over the speakers via Zoom. Okay. I wonder if it was because we were on the phone call as well. It, um, maybe that's what was happening with volume. Okay, yeah, you're... Loud and clear. Okay. Thank you, Brian, for, uh, Brian, this is Julie. Welcome. Thank you for um, joining us tonight. Hi, hey, Julie. Sorry can for the technical me? difficulty. I can. Can That's you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, I think we can go ahead. You can go ahead and get started. Okay, um, so the discussion tonight is uh, as you're finalizing your budget and your levy uh, over the next couple of weeks, um, uh, we, Dave and I and Angie have been talking about your debt levy in Fund 39. Um, this first page shows the final two debt issues uh, that are approved by referendum authority. Um, the first issue was paid off earlier this year in 2020. So, so that was the uh, demolition, final demolition cost. And, and if you recall, that was the qualified school construction bonds. So that issue is, will be removed heading into 2021. Uh, the second issue has interest rates in, at 2 and 3%. Um, the, uh, this is the remaining debt. Um, from the 2007 bonds, and it it is a we structured it as a level payment out until 2027. Uh, this debt has the ability to be refinanced at some point between now and 2023. So Dave and I have been talking about that and monitoring the low interest rate environment that we're in uh, due to the COVID pandemic recession. Um, so that's on the planning horizon, but. If we flip to page two, this is the, the aggregated principal and interest payments. And I, I want you to focus on the far right side of this page uh, because that is the, the net amount that is uh, due and payable each year, each calendar year. And so when you set your Fund 39 levy, you set it uh, based on uh, what's due in the, in the coming calendar year. So the specific topic we're, we're looking at is um, this is the year that we had been discussing for the last few years in your planning that the, the debt payment is scheduled to step down from 520,000 to 400 ish thousand for the remaining six or seven years of payments. Um, you um, Based, based on state aid and some, some growth in the district, you have um, in, the, in kind of the budget estimates that, that Dave and Angie have been working on, 
um, you have the ability to uh, levy more than that 400,000 to pay down some of the remaining debt to reduce interest cost. The other benefit of, of doing that is it manages your total school mill rate such that it doesn't step down one year knowing that it will step back up next year. Um, and you know, you're coming into the final year of your uh, current three-year operational referendum. And so by levying uh, some additional amount in the 2020-21 year to, to stabilize the total mill rate, it will give you some planning flexibility to pay down some of the remaining 2015 debt and help to offset you know, either the next cycle of the operational question um, when, when that time comes or um, the uncertainties around what the uh, state biennial budget will look like a year from now or heading into next summer. So um, we wanted to have this discussion and to answer any questions that you may have as, as you um, consider uh, some planning options that Dave and Angie are working on. Um, you know, the final, the final visual, like if you flip to, so that, ne that next page is really just the remaining payments within, that's fund 38, so that's inside of the revenue limit. But that if you go to the final page, that is just the bar chart visual of the remaining debt payments. So that first bar chart is what was levied for 1920. And then heading into 2020-21, this, this current budget cycle that you're finishing, setting the, the, the budget and levy, is where that uh, first step down is scheduled to occur. So I'll pause for a second and see what kind of questions you have and um, try to provide insight to this decision. So Dave, in a, in a one of, you had yeah, said, Brian. yeah. So every every hundred thousand is is roughly thirty cents on the on the total school bill, right? So, um, board members, if you look at page four, <clears throat> excuse me, that gives you um, what our mill rates will look like, and then if you want more detail, you can look on page five, which is the revenue limit sheet, but. Um, if you look at page four, uh, it has the two factors that we've talked about previously. Uh, we are looking uh, on October 1st, uh, which is, I guess, uh, tomorrow, uh, certifying the property valuations. So again, that number that I got from Brian, that five, approximate 5% 5 property increase. So if you look at that, uh, and then also in the right column, the reduce in aid, remember we underspent the budget uh, and put it into fund balance because we knew that this would be challenging uh, of COVID. So if you look at the um, bottom right, um, uh, you will see the mill rates. So for example, uh, if we levy the 400,200, our mill rate will be approximately 8.8. .8. If you decided to levy another $100,000 to, as Brian said, pay down debt, um, that would put the mill rate at 9.2. So you can see each corresponding, as Brian said, $100,000 uh, in levy, how that affects the mill rate. Uh, again, a reminder at the bottom, uh, our mill rate last year was 10.14. And uh, one of the big reasons, obviously, that uh, the mill rate would go down anyway, is we have 100, approximately a little over $120,000 less that we're paying in debt levy. So those are the numbers that, um, you know, discussion can center around and as, you know, Brian's uh, visuals too. So just want to explain that. So Lori, did you?
Hello? Okay. Is that working now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so Brian, my question is, um, theoretically, if we paid the 500,000, we could technically pay off, if we paid off 500,000 every year, we could pay this off a year and a half early. Is that correct? Correct. So you're saying if you continue in, in 2021, 22 and 23, you would, you would then be able to shorten, you'd be able to completely pay off 2027 and then start to pay off 2026. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. Yes. That, that's what I'm correcting. Okay. The second question I have is, are there any prepayment penalties to paying off early on this loan? Um, no, there's just a time period. So um, what um, a number of districts utilize this in their overall planning uh, to manage the total mill rate. Um, so in what would happen functionally is you would levy an amount that you'd collect in uh, January, February. Uh, Dave, Angie, and I would talk about the use of it, like how we would want to apply it to the years from 24 through 27 uh, based on your future planning. Um, like the next, if, if there's a next operational rant referendum that would be needed, um, as we're hearing about the next biennial budget, we can talk about where would we try to apply those dollars, um, you know, either from a levy reduction standpoint or a maximizing the interest cost avoidance. Um, either way, if we do it before June 30 of next year, that would, and, and we put it into an escrow account it would sit there until 2023. And that's when it, the, the prior bondholders get paid off. From, from the district standpoint, it's removed from your books as of that the closing of that escrow account in, in June. And it's treated as an aidable expense for this fiscal year. So you would get aid on that payment, that extra payment towards the debt. You would get aid on that next October as part of the October 15th aid at that point. Okay, and while it's sitting in the escrow account, is it earning interest or is it just a flat, no, zero? Yeah, it, it is, but the rate is near zero given where- Okay, that, that was gonna be my next question, but- yeah. Yes, technically you are investing it in a US treasury investment, but because let's let's say that's, that's June, yeah, that June of 21 we would be investing for basically two years, just shy of two years. So we, we would buy a two year US treasury, which a two year US treasury right now is like a 0 0.15 yep. maybe. So so okay. technically yes is the answer to your question, but it's not very much. No, not really. Right. So then my last, my last question is, um, right now this is at two and 3%, I think it, it was the, is what we're paying. Has the the interest rate at all dropped? That refinancing makes sense, or is it better at this point to just pay off early? Um, yes. So so that both is the right answer, right? If if you can levy to pay off, that's going to maximize the savings. Uh, as I mentioned, Dave and I are talking about when to uh, bring back a refinancing. Uh, to the board because of that two-year period, that the 2023 payoff. Um, so if we can get to 2023 and rates are still low, that's going to be your mo the, the, to maximize your savings. Um, right now, you know, in 24 through 27, current market uh, rates are, you know, one something, right? So, so there, there is savings, but it, there'd be even more savings if we didn't have to borrow new. Right, so if, if we can downsize with some additional levy, we, what we would bring back to discuss is, you know, would, would look better because you have less, less debt outstanding. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Brian, uh, this is Shelly. Um, I had a question I had noticed, yeah, the two and the 3%. Um, when this loan was refinanced, was there a step up interest rate? on that or why the two different rates? I thought it was locked in at a 10 year when we refinanced it originally. It, it is Shelly, but if you remember each, each year in a bond issue, this is different than a car loan or a home loan where you get one flat rate from the bank. Um, each year of a series of bonds or notes has its own rate 
that that's that's locked in and fixed. So it's not like it's stepping up. It's it's the 2020 maturity had a two percent. So the 325 thousand that was bought by an investor that was bought with a coupon rate of a two percent. The the 2021 the 330 thousand that was sold for that year it was a two percent and then so on as you go out the 340 thousand in 2022 that was sold with a coupon rate of three uh, percent. So it it the the when we finalized that back in 2015 we gave you kind of a blended all in cost of each of those rates so that that that's what your your that's what you locked in and fixed for that 10 year period or 12 year period at that point. Okay, yep, totally understand. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Brian? Hi, Brian, Tina Matheson here. Um, when you talk about an account, if we have the money waiting and to pay that off, if something comes up, that money has to go towards this loan payment or we can use it if we have to repair our roof or we have an unseen expense at that time. Are we obligated to pay off that loan or will it be there for other use? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, but the, the very reason you're able to select an amount to levy is, is because this specific obligation, this, this specific expenditure is authorized by uh, the referendum. So, you know, the, the, the limit on how much you can levy for is the, is the amount you have remaining to pay off this debt. Right. So, so in theory, if you wanted to, you could levy for the remaining roughly 2.5 million all at, you know, and just and pay off all the principal. And the reason I highlight that is that you, these dollars, it's not, it's not a trade off with a roof or a boiler or somewhere else in the operational budget because you can't, you're already levying to the, to the revenue limit cap. And those are the dollars that can be, um, decided upon where is it most needed within the budget. These dollars are kind of in a separate authorization um, that, that um, you, 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 just, you just don't have the additional choice to um, move it over to pay for a roof or a boiler. Okay, thank you. Am I explaining that okay? Did I? Uh, yep, I cleared it, it up. Okay. And, and that's why many districts in the last couple of years with rising property value and the, and the revenue limits doing what they're doing to the total school mill rate, you know, they're, they are, this is the one area that you can levy outside of the revenue limit to manage your total mill rate to try and pay down debt and position the school district financially for what comes next. And so, um, you know, this is a long range planning activity and, and positioning the district um, to take advantage of additional state aid to reduce interest costs. And, you know, if, if aid gets cut next year, you turn off this levy and the total mill rate is, you know, relatively the same, right? So let's say, say hypothetically, you, you levy 200,000 into this fund for that repayment that puts your total mill rate at uh, Dave somewhere around nine, probably 950, 960, somewhere in there, which is still a reduction from last year. Um, you pay down the debt, you're paying less interest heading into next year. And let's say the biennial budget cuts back state aid by 200,000. You now have positioned yourself to have a choice to, to not levy that extra 200,000 next year for debt repayment and, and instead it, it offsets the increased local share of school costs. Jack, Paul, questions? Brian, Paul Winch, just refresh my memory on the pros and the cons of the, the, the big fluctuations in the, in the, uh, the mill. We just talked about some pros, you know, if we could levy more for debt service and, and keep it stable. What are the cons of the ups and downs of the of the uh, 
mill rate? Well, the this year, if you drop it from ten to eight, it, you're, you're, it, there's not many cons, right? It's, it's going to sound great. Uh, next year, when your operational uh, override amount goes up from eight hundred to nine hundred, and heading into a uh, uncertain biennial budget, you know, there's a there's a decent chance your mill rate will go back up to nine or ten something. Because this board for many years has you know worked hard to keep that mill rate in the 10 to 11 range. You know, as you asked for and received your operating um, funding, you know, for the three-year renewals. Um, so I, the, the first year, Paul, there's probably, you, you know, probably not a, a significant negative other than, you know, people that may say thank you this year next year when you raise it back up we'll probably have forgotten that you did that um so if you can you know you've again for as long as i've worked with the district we've, we've tried to hover in that 10 to 11 range and and in certain years we've had to move debt around to do that kind of rethinking how we were paying off debt and that's really what this is is you know if we knew the math was going to all the way it did in 2020, 21, and these options would be available to you, we probably would have accelerated, you know, some of the 27 principal and paid it off in 21, right? And kept your payments smooth at 520 or something like that, right? Or something level. Um, so, you know, it, it, the, the opportunity cost is, you know, you, you won't have the ability to offset in a future year should that you know, either local levy share go up or aid go down, one of the two. Did I answer that, Paul? I, I want to make sure I'm getting to the crux of what you're asking. He <laughs> yes, you did. He, he said yes. Okay, thank you. Anything else for Brian? Brian, uh, this is Dave. Again, you know, in terms of managing the levy rate, um, this is an option every year. So let's say that the board decides not to do it this year for whatever reason. I mean, it's still an option next year that they said, okay, depending on all what happens and, and the real, the realistic thing is the biennium budget is going to be tough next, next year. So um, but this is always an option that's on the plate, correct? Correct. Correct. When we communicated the uh, original referendum, we used conservative planning, um, you know, based on what we thought the payment schedule over that, that time period was going to be. We came in better because we were conservative, right? So rates came in better. Then in 2015, you were able to refinance to make it better. So, you know, the, this again is it's it's if you had the crystal ball to tell you where you would be in a total school mill rate in this budget development year, you know, would you have chosen to structure your original payments slightly differently, right? And that's kind of what this year, as you're pointing out, Dave, you know, each year going forward, you I mean, you had it previous years too, but you didn't need it or use it because you were layering in the uh, the operational amounts. So uh, there wasn't room in that targeted, you know, 10 to 11 type dollar mill rate range. Um, so yes, short answer to your question is each year you have this decision that you can make on how you wanna repay the debt. And Brian, the, the levy, so if they do do an extra levy, again, aid will follow the following year um, in October, am I correct? Yes, as long as we put it into that escrow account and, and therefore it's treated as spent uh, out of the district's funds. Like if we just levy it and carry it over in fund balance, that's not aidable, right. but but you have to technically spend it towards paying down the debt to be considered aidable for next year. Okay. I guess any other questions for Brian? I, um... You know, again, we're looking for guidance tonight on um, 
and what we want to do because again on this revenue limit sheet um, once we get our aid certified aid amount on october 15th obviously that is when we have to decide um, what you want in turn a levy debt levy amount um, again, you can keep it at the 400,000 and, but at the, uh, the budget hearing meeting on the 20th is where, you know, we will adopt the levy, whatever level, um, that you want. And remember it's an operating levy. It's a debt levy. Um, so just more information to consider. Okay. So... Um, anything else for Brian? No, thank Any you for other comments, uh, Brian. Go ahead. Um, I, I said, uh, no, I have, I don't have any additional comments. Thank you for having me on the agenda tonight to discuss it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you. So again, tonight, I, I'm just looking for direction from you um, in terms of uh, what you wish Angie and I to do. Uh, I think again, Brian talked about um, aid uh, on the extra levy, uh, reduce interest costs, pay down debt. I think those are all positives. Um, and, but as he said, in terms of a mill rate, uh, this does look good to go from 10.1, 10.14 .1, to 8.8. .8. So uh, a reminder again, next year is the third year of the referendum, as Brian said, um, and that goes to 900,000 next year for uh, the operating referendum. I mean, so. I guess my opinion, this is just my opinion. Um, my opinion is if we can pay down the debt faster and continue to do the 500,000 um, and cut off a year and a half, two years possibly, that to me that is intriguing because I, I just think it gets us to a better place with our debt. And we're still lowering the mill rate for that today. It's just not as much. So that's my two cents. Oh, um, Tina asked me what mill rate I would be looking at. I was looking at the 500,200. 500, 500, That's the one I was looking at. So it would go to the, is it 9.2? Yep. Instead, yes. instead of the 8.8. .8. Yep. So it's still lower than the 10. Yep. Um, you know, but it's not eight. I mean, it's not eight, and it's 8.8. .8, .8, so it's still still lower than the 10, but not as good as 8.8. .8. And we're cutting off, you know, like I said, two to years at perspective, possibly. I just think that it, it makes sense on the debt and not have a debt over. Cause we're, you know, if we ever have to put a roof on the school that that's gonna be really expensive. So that's gonna be an additional debt probably at that point in time. So if we can get rid of some of the current debt before that happens. I don't know, I just think that's smart, but that's my opinion. Well, and I think it's important, like Brian said, long-term planning, not just from an operational levy standpoint, but also um, obviously we've been fortunate that our enrollment has been increasing and we've gotten families to move into the district and we do have some developments. So at some point, I'm not saying if it's gonna happen the next year or whatever, um, I think there will have to be some discussion about uh, especially if enrollment keeps increasing, what we may have to do in terms of space. And so um, if you were looking at, uh, as Lori said, you know, paying off some debt earlier, um, that may factor in to what you could be able to do in the future in terms of if you had to look at a, um, some type of space or building referendum. I guess, yeah, I'm on the same page as Lori that either the 9-2 or the 9-5, 9-5 is splitting the difference between this year's 10-1 um, and 8-8. Uh, eight, eight. Um, again, paying down debt, um, not knowing what our property values are at yet until tomorrow when the final numbers are out. Um, but yeah, somewhere falling between that 9-2 to 9-5, I'm fine either way with either one of those. Okay. 
I'm, I'm following the, um, it's our debt and I think we have to pay it off because I don't think we know what's coming next. Um, I'm going a little bit higher than you at 9.75 just because it's still under 10 um, and we would get that loan paid off quickly. Um, if we start jumping almost a dollar for a mill rate I'm concerned about, um, people are gonna be happy under 10 and we still have this debt regardless that we have to pay off at some point. The earlier we pay it off, the better we're gonna be, I think, um, fiscally for the roof or for any additional. So under 10, I think is good. Yeah, I mean, I would I would be okay with either one of those. The only reason I didn't go too high with that is because if we're gonna um, spend to the 900,000 next year, you know, that's that's higher than what we had last year. So would it be better to, you know, pay off the debt and not maybe spend as much of that 900,000. So I don't know, I just balancing those two things, I think can, is gonna be tricky. Can you take that other to that other fund that we saved, that we started that fund, whatever? 46. For a fund 46. Yes, well you can, what you can do, Tina, no, you and uh, just wanted to go back to a point Brian said, so that any of the debt levy, if you do extra debt levy, that needs to sit in that uh, fund 39. Um, operating levy, yes, if you have a surplus, and that's what we've done the last few years, is take money and put it into Fund 46. Again, the positive about the Fund 46 is you get aided on that right away versus if you put it into fund balance, you, you uh, don't until, until you spend it and everything, so. So what year are we on with that? Didn't we have to wait? Fund 46, what year are we? Yeah, it's, we're in year, I have to go for sure two, if not year three. I'll have to double check on that. We're in year two. Aren't we? We're in year two. Okay. I will. I will double check. I. I think this. I thought this school year was year three now. Okay. I. I will double check. Maybe it is. Brian kind of talked like. No. Yeah. I don't know. You guys know. Remember. I, I will get that answer for you. So can you bring back, you know, a sample of each or do you wanna go with one? I mean, you know, I've heard anywhere between nine and 10, right? right. Yeah, I, I guess what I would want, Julie, is, is to give me a, uh, a mill rate that's acceptable. And then obviously, depending on, you know, the aid and everything, I don't think the state aid's going to um, change a whole lot. So if you said, um, hey, Dave and Angie, I want to keep the mill rate at 9.5 or below, um, then, you know, your debt levy, we would just adjust that from there. So... Yeah, I would like a direction. So, uh, what's our mill rate right now? 10, 10, 1, 4. 4. Yep. Is that right? Yep. 10 point one yep. something. 10 point one four. Yep. So how would people feel? I'm just throwing this out there. 9.5 to 9.75, somewhere in there. I like under 10. And I like 9.75, but that's just me. You like what? 9.75. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I guess I would go with uh, under 9 points or 9.75 or under. Okay. I'm fine with that. Get off. All right. So Dave? Around 9.75? Yep, and then we can adjust yep, the debt levy and, and uh, again, depending on the other numbers come in. But I would assume, so if it's 9.75, you know, it's gonna be somewhere then um, between 600 and the 700, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else regarding that? Okay. So next we have a approval of a long-term sub for our elementary art position. Okay. Um, 
as you know, uh, our uh, Johnny Ray Buolta, our former teacher, resigned uh, um, uh, on the September 24th or 5th. We advertised a position um, on WeCan, which is the, the system that most schools use to, to advertise. We didn't get any um, uh, certified candidates. In fact, we didn't get any applicants. We did have one and they actually pulled out when they heard it and when they might've read closer that it was only part-time. Um, uh, and then uh, we also simultaneously put it out to staff. And, um, and again, no one on staff that was certified um, expressed interest. So uh, Mark uh, Bratz has been a sub for us for a number of years, has worked uh, between the elementary and the middle school, high school, probably more so in the middle school, high school, um, but did do a long-term sub when uh, Dustin Schilling went on paternity leave a couple years ago. Does a really good job, good with kids. Um, our plan would be to, um, if you approve his hire as a long-term sub, would uh, then when it gets uh, after in January, when new graduates, hopefully there's new graduates, art graduates, um, we would repost it and hopefully get a certified uh, person. So again, our recommendation at this point is uh, Mark Bratz uh, for the long-term sub position through pro approximately uh, January 20th, which is our semester. And when colleges generally, um, they graduate earlier, but they have to fulfill if, if we hire a new person uh, out of college, generally a lot of the student teachings run through January, so. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve Mark Bratz as the long-term substitute for first semester. Second. Sorry. Motion made by Shelley, seconded by Tina to approve the long-term sub for elementary art. Mark Bratz, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And I think that since that was decided, we can adjourn. Correct, Dave? Yes. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Tina? Yep. Okay. Motion made by Lori, seconded by Tina to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you.